All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Now our Thursday Thursday, we took last Thursday off because Eric and I, myself, were both down in SoCal for work training reasons, but we're back now, back on this motor. We've got the crankshaft here. Don't mind all these shavings down here. We're gonna clean this thing up after uh, we polish it, which we're gonna do right now. And uh, a couple years ago now, I made a video on how to polish a crankshaft like a redneck with basically zero dollars invested. I'm gonna try to top that today. And I think I got a quicker way. So we're going to try something crazy here with an old engine block. We'll see. All right, so it's coming together here. We got the crankshaft in this old block. Got a couple bearings in it. We got the thrust bearing in down here. We have a bearing uh, top and bottom, both halves in it here and also here. So we got this thing able to rotate. Now, as you can see, there's a little gap down there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to take our sandpaper, our 600 grit, make a little strip that goes down there and we can kind of pull up on both sides and give it some pressure. And we just gotta figure out a way to connect this drill to the crankshaft here. So we found a bolt that threads into here, but the head of it's too big to actually go in our check. So we're gonna go ahead and basically put another bolt butting up to, up to that bolt going the opposite direction and then weld it together so we can actually grab the shaft of that bolt with the threads and hopefully be able to spin this guy and do a freaking 50 second polish job. Okay, we got our two bolts made together. Just gotta put a couple beads on them. Two is one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we might be inducted in the Redneck Hall of Fame for this because we made it work. The crankshaft polishing jig. Check this out. All Eric, you need is a spare block. <laughs> do the honor. All right, you see guys what we got going on here? A little wipe the baby's ass thing. Ready? Watch. Yep. Here we go. You put pressure on it. Get a nice polish. 600 grit. Amazing we can come up with it. We're drinking a little bit of Jack and Coke. Want to go faster? Or you want to pull harder, one of the two? Uh, go faster. All right, you want to be doing this with the rotation of the crankshaft, obviously. You don't want to be going in the reverse direction because you want to polish it with rotation. But like I said, we got the front bearing in there. We got the, uh, the forge bearing in and the thrust bearing, and that's it. Just a little bit of WD-40 on the bearing so it rotates, and WD-40 on the uh, 600 grit sandpaper that we cut out. Let's we'll see what it looks like. Oh, that works so good. Let's get a little more. Ready? Yeah. Pay for a polish at the machine shop. Oh, is it looking any better? Oh, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Alright. Pretty shiny. So, the rear one, the thrust bearing is going to be a little more challenging because we can't really take that bearing out down there. Because then when we rotate the crank, it's going to be doing all this kind of stuff. So we're just going to go on top, put a little downward pressure on it. This is just a big old keep my hand very still so I don't get it taken off my crankshaft. Well, you're going to have to go ahead and move it like in a zigzag yeah. pattern so you don't just Without take off hitting on one the side. Counterweight on that side. Very precise movements here so you make sure that it's totally <laughs> even front to back. Yeah. Ready? This is what's easier Ready? Yeah. Going places in life. I think they do this in NASCAR. Yeah, back in 1950. Okay, what it cost? All right, so what we moved on now to the raw journals, and we've taken our 600 grit that we used on the mains, 
We've doubled it up here, as you can see, so it's double as wide. Cut a new piece out, put a little WD-40 in there, taped it off, and then we're gonna go ahead and show you how we're gonna do the rest. Okay, the next step here, which Hillbilly Eric is going ahead and showing us here, is wrapping a bunch of cord, not a shoelace. As you guys noticed my last video, I was doing a shoelace, but this is a little bit more intricate because you can monitor the load on it with a little bit of elasticity. All right, so you're just gonna go ahead and wrap the entire journal here, all the way around, front to back. Not, not easy to do with one person. Nope. As you can see, the entire surface area of the sandpaper, the 600 grit, is covered now. And this is the fun part. So, Friends, at first, go we're gonna go ahead and start it with the rotational of the crank, which is uh, clockwise. There you go. Good? Yep. All right, so you're gonna see he's gonna put a lot of load on his left hand, which is your right side on the camera. Come on, baby, come on, work with me. That's how we do it. Nice and slow, work it. Okay, we just went the clockwise way. When we do that, he's loading this side a lot. So what it ends up doing is, is it puts a lot more load and stress on this side. So this side of the bearing will get, or the journal will get a lot more polish and this side will. So we're gonna put it in reverse now and load this side up so it's even. Ready? Precision. Look good? Oh yeah. I would say so. Pretty polished. Not a single edge catching a fingernail. I got all Duramaxes. <laughs> Most of them have a truck of the same of that early 2000s generation. Yeah. All right, well, I wasn't gonna film tonight, but two, when the propane goes out, you improvise. We just put the cam bearings in on that table, now we're cooking on it. Let's go. A little bit of dirt don't hurt. All right, guys, so uh, the crankshaft is in the motor now. Got it out of the jig that's back over there and in the motor it's gonna be in. And uh, it looks perfect, man. I'm telling you, I wish that this camera could pick it up, but it looks really good. Just shiny, um, perfect. So uh, I like it and um, I'm pretty proud of it. It worked very well and I can already hear all you keyboard warriors out there, just like my last video where I made a redneck crankshaft polishing uh, video and I was doing it pretty much the same way, but I was doing it on the bench with a, uh, a piece of shoestring and just going up and down to each one. It took a long time, but the same results pretty much. But you guys tore me apart in that video saying, oh, you just ruined your crankshaft. You just took your oil clearances and blew them out of the roof and now you're gonna have no oil pressure. You just totally ruined it, you guys. People that are saying that probably never built a motor before. 600 grit sandpaper, okay? Wet sanding with WD-40. If I took off half of a half a thousandths on these journals, I'd be very surprised. So, just to kind of finalize this video and, and put an end to all this, we plastic edged it last night, okay? So we got all, well, we didn't do the rods yet, but we did the same thing on the rods that we did the main, so it should be the same. This is a standard crankshaft, so the standard uh, size on the mains and the rods never been turned before and it's an old crankshaft that's been through a couple motors So it's been run before um, and we basically got a uh, reading on all these main uh, journals here and uh, This is basically what it looks like And if you don't know what that means, well, I'll show you. Okay, this is plastic gauging and uh, That right there. Well, hold on. This is the bearing I use. I want to show you guys. This is a standard bearing You can look up that part number MB557SI, that's a standard bearing, okay? It's not oversized, it's not undersized, it's standard. So we got a standard crankshaft, a standard bearing, and uh, let's look what it comes out at, okay? That looks like it's a little bit smaller than one and a half thousandths, but definitely larger than two thousandths. So in between one and a half to two thousandths of clearance, 
I'm gonna say, let's just say, you know, 1.7 thousandths of clearance. That's pretty tight, okay? And on my race motors, I like to see a little more clearance. So, you know, let's just say that this thing, we took off a little bit, all right? If we went from one and a half to 1.7 thousandths, that's minuscule. You will not even notice that. But I can hear all of the people right now in the comments saying, oh, plastic age isn't even accurate. Why are you even measuring it that way, all right? Just to show you guys, they're all the same. They're all smaller than one and a half and, and a little bigger than two, okay? So anyways, for you people out there saying plastic gauges is not accurate and that's the only, not the only way, but pretty much solely the way I build my motors with plastic gauge, uh, I got a micrometer, let's just measure it, okay? If you think that I took a bunch of material off this journal and whatever and that I totally ruined it, let's put a mic to it and put you guys all to rest. All right, just so you guys know, I'm not fooling with you. Same crankshaft. Still look at the plastic gauge on it, okay? So, what size were these journals from the factory, okay? A small block Chevy crankshaft is supposed to be 2.45 on the mains and 2100 on the rods. Okay, that's the general size, but that's rounding up. So, what's the actual size? Well, it pays off to work for GM because we have all the access to all the service manuals and stuff. So let's go through here and find out. Uh, let's go to the last generation of a small block Chevy, which is a 1996 when the Vortex came out. Let's do 1996 Chevy uh, pickup truck. All right. C10, uh, C two wheel drive pickup truck. All right. Service manuals. Okay. Now we're going to go to engine. 5.7 liter mechanical specifications. All right, now we're gonna go engine mechanical specifications. That's a 5.7 liter 350. All right, now this will tell us what the journals are supposed to be. So, camshaft, no, okay, connecting rod. Connecting rod journal diameter between 2.0986 and 2.0998. So let's write that down here. All right, there's our rods. Now the mains, mains we're looking at crankshaft journal uh, diameter. Here we go. 2.4481 to 2.4491. So 2.4481 through 2.4491. So that's a 1,000 split they're allowing. So. Let's measure our crankshaft and find out what it's supposed to be and what is that? All right, I'm getting the micronic feel with this little guy up here that makes a little clicky noise. So, let's open this baby up and check our first main journal here. All right. That's it right there. Might be a little bit tight, but we'll check it out. All right, so we're looking at two point four four basically nine zero two point four four nine zero okay let's write that down there it is two point four four nine zero all right and let's go with this rod gel right here suck this guy in quite a bit That's good right there. 2.0986. 2.0986. All right. 2.0986 on the rod. So we're on basically the light side, but we're within the range that they say that it should be from the factory. 2.4490, we're on the high side of the mains. So we're within, if I took a whole bunch of material off this crankshaft, it would be well out there, right? But we still have the plastic gauge to measure it. So 1.7 thousandths on the mains, that is pretty tight. That's tighter than I want. I want about, on my race motors, I want about two and a half to three thousandths of clearance on both the rods and the mains. 
um, just because we're running the heavyweight oil and these things see a lot of heat and it kind of will, it's a little bit of a cushion room there for if you had you know a little bit of something in the oil. Um, you don't score up the journals as easily, but hey, that's it. Now you guys know. It's not too, you know, it's not like you're taking a whole bunch of material off here. All right, so I'm gonna leave you guys with one last thing here. Um, I said this in the last video where I did the Red Deck crankshaft polishing on the bench, and that is this way, this, this is a polishing video, okay? This is not a turning a crankshaft video. So, this does not address any kind of out of round or taper on these journals, okay? Turning does that. So if you took a crankshaft to the machine shop and had it polished there, it's gonna do the same thing. They're not gonna address any out of round or taper, okay? They're doing the exact same thing, but they have a different machine. Oh yeah, and in the last video I did two years ago on the polishing the crankshaft, I used some microfiber and uh, polishing compound at the very end to make it really shiny. We didn't do that this time because it looks good enough for us, but if you wanted to go the extra mile, you do the same thing. Take some microfiber, cut a little strip off, stick it under there, still in the jig, a little bit of polishing compound, have somebody hold it, and you can really polish it really nice. But anyways, I'm not doing it on this one. It looks good enough for us. This is gonna be a budget build, and uh, it's not gonna make more than 300, 350 horsepower in this limited class we're running in. So um, anyways, it's beer 30. Time to drink a beer. And uh, what am I gonna do about this? Because I said it's a little bit too tight of clearances for me. 1.7, I'm not really happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to buy different bearings. I'm gonna have to go ahead and buy an STD X bearing, which basically gives an extra 1,000th of clearance. So I'm gonna go from 1.7 to 2.7 thousandths of clearance. And that's what I'm looking for. So I wish, honestly, I wish that the polishing would've took it off more material. So I could've just stuck with the standard bearings, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drink a beer. Remember, if it's bent, it's not broken. Do it yourself, polish it. You know, if you got 600 grit, WD-40, and a helping hand, just do it the way I did it, all right? It's super simple, easy, and it takes about an hour of time, and it's time well spent. So remember, if it's bent, it's not broken. I already said that, but I'm gonna say it again because that's how we roll, baby.